Hello, welcome to another day of Tai Chi with me. I'm Chris in the beautiful sunshine here. Uh, there's a, this mic is pretty good. There's a lot of traffic about probably 50 meters away from here. And um, I think a lot of it will be muffled out by this mic. Uh, hopefully the wind doesn't come across too much either. But um, this technology is very useful before I can ever do this because the, the wind will be too strong or the traffic too loud. Uh, this place is where I come to train often. Uh, this is in Lake Billy Griffin in Canberra. So we're doing a, a movement from Hunyuan Tai Chi, uh, part of their Pao Choi forms. Uh, it's also in the first form as well of Tai Chi, the, it's called the entrance form or the 24 form of Tai Chi. So we'll do some warm-ups first. Let's start off with the feet first, the knees, so bending the knees back and forward. You can never do enough knee warm-up in Tai Chi. There's so much pressure and load goes through your knees. And you always make sure you keep your heel on the ground. If your knees are a bit sore doing this even, you just back it off so you're not bending as much. Or you can try squeezing your butt. So you're clenching your butt when you do it. And it'll make the load go through your butt where it should go, rather than through your knees. So something you can play with. In my courses that I'm producing, knee pain in Tai Chi is one of the areas I'm focusing on a lot. Then circle. Circle the knees. Just small circles either way, both ways. And come up. So just bending your knees, bending your hips, letting the weight shift across, lifting one side. Shift the weight, lift one side. So you're feeling like your weight goes all the way through that leg into the middle of the foot. You lift this side, bend the knee, bend the hip, lift. So when I do this, there's a bend in my hip, bend in my knee. It doesn't have to be too much, but it's not locked out. There's a bit of a bend, and I'm not just bending my knee and having this flat here. So I actually bend here like there's a, a stool behind me. And I lift. So there's a like a balloon drawing up. So the balloons give me an upward impulse through my through my center of my body. So from here, step out with your left foot to the corner a little bit. Keep that knee and hip a bit bent and you're relaxing into that leg. The force goes through the leg. Your head stay over your pelvis. So we're not like this, we're not like this. There. and just test your balance. Do you have your balance or not? Then we start circling. So we make the knee make a circle. So this is a reasonably advanced balance exercise. And gradually your knee can make a bigger circle. Then we go the other way. Hands on your hips so your shoulders are aiming to relax. Then step down to the other corner. So foot 45, knee and hip bent. Feel the weight go into that leg test your balance and as you do that is your head still over your pelvis or this people usually do this like this I noticed this won't allow the sacroiliac joint to open up so we want to be vertical so the joint on the especially on this side can open up at the back circle the knee the other way Step down. So we're just going to make uh, big circles. So make fists, just making big circles. It's about the height of your head at the top. And your arms always have a curve. So here I'm not locked out, they have a natural hang here. And here there's a bit of a curve, here there's a bit of a curve, curve. So I'm not doing 100% straight. About that 70%, all the motion we're doing 70%. And I'm letting my torso turn. So this part of the body is turning. And I'm generating the motion with the hips and the legs. So 
So as the arms start to drop, the elbows start to drop, shoulders drop, here bends also. So that goes together. Then we push with the legs as the arms rise up, turn the waist, sink, turn. So there's a unification that starts to happen. The drop of the arms, this elbows drop, pelvis drops, body turns. As the arms rise, it's almost like the legs push or help the arms swing back up. And as does the turn of the waist. And we go the other way. Let it swing through. Okay, so let's do uh, with the legs as well. So we're sitting in the, uh, what we call a horse stance. So your feet are a little bit turned out about that angle there, not too turned out, not straight. The legs roll this way. So open that way, open that way. So my knees roll that way. Just a little bit for me to sink to start off. So when I'm here, your butt not sticking out like this, your butt's tucked under. And you're sitting back in the quad, in the hips here. So there's a crease here. If you don't have the crease, it looks like this flat here so I sit here it doesn't even have to be too low there's just a bend in there bending my knees bending my hips and my knees are in line with my big toe big toe so it always stays in that alignment so pop your hands on your belly I want you to start turning so we shift a bit of weight across rise turn sink turn so you're feeling your torso turning and rising. So I'm shifting about 10% of weight across. This is 50-50 weight, 60-40, 60-40 here. Rise up, so I push with this leg to rise, turn. Weight goes over here, 60-40 over here, and I sink. So I bend in here. Body's staying upright. We're not bending forward at all. We're not bending forward like this. So I was teaching you how to turn, plus use the qua. So the qua is the inguinal crease. It's the big linkage of the upper and lower body together. Then we go the other way. And this should smash your legs too. Feel your legs working. One thing about Tai Chi, it makes your legs bloody strong. Makes your hips really mobile. You can move really well. Uh, if someone goes to push you over, you generally find you have uh, more stability. If you run into someone accidentally, they usually bounce off you. Just a natural springiness, that's all. Okay, so give your legs a bit of a shake. And let's start this exercise. So they'll complete everything we just put together. So we're back in this stance, legs roll out a little bit, sitting back in the stance. So your arms lift to your, your uh, left side or the right side. As the arms drop, sinking, shift some weight, turn the body, shift the weight, turn. So we loosen the arms, keeping curves all the time. And the, all the motion is generated exactly from what we just did. I actually feel when I do this, it's all coming from here. And my arms, just follow that. If I was to make my arms more passive and make this faster, it would, and I used just here, it's like a swing starts to come through as this part moves. So it's this part moving, the arms then swung like a pendulum through here. So that's the kind of idea we want, but we slow it down, of course. Keep it soft, 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 soft. And let's start some of the hand motion. So the hands open and it's like you're grabbing something. 
hands open, grabbing Holding it a rest, give your legs a break. And we're going to do the other side. Let's go again. So we're rolling the knees out. You weight through the center of your feet, not only in the ball of your foot. And we go this side, so your right side. And we shift the weight, body turns. As I do that, I'm aiming to soften in here, soften this area. Usually it wants to stay really tight. We want to soften, make this really mobile through the hips. So uh, it's giving your nervous system a chance to access a different way of moving the hip. And we start using the hands too. So we're opening the hands, like you're grabbing something, pulling it in, hands open. And just one more. Good. Close there. Breathing in and out through your nose, in through the nose, out through the nose, sinking into your legs. And we're just finishing the hands on the on the dunt here and just below belly button here center of the palm below the belly button bending knees bending hips pelvis a little bit tucked under just letting any tension in your body sink relax let it settle into your feet into the ground And just directing your awareness to the dantian, the area just inside your body where your hands are. Uh, just a word of caution, uh, people injure their knees in Tai Chi trying to push the height too, too low uh, or letting the knees move too much. So the knees move too much, it would be this. So this is a really bad alignment here. So the knees always stay in line with the big toe. Even when I'm turning, the knees still stay in line with the big toe. And as your strength builds, as you can relax through here better, you find that you can sink ultimately so your thighs are parallel to the floor, but the idea is that it's springy, it's still relaxed, everything can move, as opposed to sinking and then uh, tense, nothing can move, can't breathe in here. We want to sink to here, and that's definitely months to achieve, months, years for a lot of people. So you uh, allow your body to sink in its own time, and always work in that 70% rule, that you're comfortable pushing yourself a little bit, but you're still comfortable within uh, the height of your practice. The alignment's always good. I don't want you to damage anything. But it's one of the, uh, Tai Chi has five levels of achievement inside it. And definitely as you progress, one of the, the gungs, gung is like uh, the, uh, the development of your, of your Tai Chi, how much it's uh, developing, transforming, fusing into your body, is when your body starts taking on certain shapes that feel very natural, very, very powerful. And uh, the, one of the signs is that you're able to sink naturally into your stance and the thighs parallel to the floor. The body can start to express some power as well. And the breathing is quite full in the belly. So the breathing doesn't come back up here when you go lower in your stances. Okay, and there's a sense of more energy in your body and flexibility. Uh, it's all big things in Tai Chi in terms of the development that your body's getting from the practice. 
I'll see you tomorrow.